In this lecture, I'll talk about the Nakano vanishing theorem for positive line bundles. For this, I'll first prove uh, or first mention the Akizuki Nakano formula. Uh, I'll discuss cases for positivity of the right hand side. And at the end, I'll give the statement and say something about the proof of the Nakano vanishing theorem. Okay, so the setting for us will be uh, a Hermitian line bundle. And X Vega compact Kähler manifold. Uh, so as we saw in the previous lecture, right? So for such a Hermitian line bundle, one can associate a churn connection that decomposes in the following form. And as such, to both the Dale and the Dale bar part, one can associate a corresponding Laplacian. So Dale bar Laplacian will be this second order uh, differential operator acting on sheaf of smooth PQ for L valued PQ forms. And same thing for Dale. Oops. And the Akuzuki Nakano formula comes about by trying to uh, compare uh, these two flashes. Okay, so before I can show you what that is, uh, let, let me, let's recall uh, three more things. So if beta is a one, one form X, then beta induces by wedging an operator from PQ, L-valued PQ forms to L-valued PQ, P plus one, Q plus one forms. And sometimes we will forget the wedge. So we will uh, identify the beta with the operator that it induces. A very special case will be when beta will be the same as the underlying uh, Kähler form. In that case, by lambda, we will denote its adjoint. So this is wedging by omega adjoint, right? So that will go from PQ forms with values in L to P minus one, Q minus one forms. And then as we introduced much earlier, Right, so theta h will denote the curvature of uh, the Hermitian structure, which locally is negative i del del bar log of h. Okay, so the Akizuki Nakano formula says the following. So the difference between the del bar Laplacian and the del Laplacian uh, for a smooth PQ form on L is nothing but the following commutator. One way to denote this is theta h. Okay. Now, uh, the good thing here is that on the left, right, you see 
the difference between two uh, second order uh, partial differential operator. So this is second order PU. The grating on the right hand side, this is a tensor map. So there's no differentiation at all. So maybe you can call zero order tensor map. So really it's a good question to understand before we can move on. Like what, what, what is this expression? All right, so what is commutator between theta h and lambda? Well, certainly it's a tensor map, as I said. So in particular, it's enough to understand it at a single point. So let's pick x and x. And we know that this map will go from q at x. Okay, so uh, since theta h is a one one form, so I will denote by lambda one, lambda on, lambda n, the eigenvalues of theta h and x with respect to omega at x. Okay, so. Um, oops. All right. So there's the following lemma whose proof is essentially careful linear algebra. So uh, if, if, if one picks U a PQ form at X, All right, then as we know, so you can be written as U capital JK, where J length P, K's have length Q, DZI wedge DZ, so DZJ wedge DZK bar. Okay, so the content of the lemma is as follows. So theta h lambda u is just sum of jk u And then here is what's important. So it will be sum of the lambda j's, where j is from capital J, plus sum of lambda k's, where k is from capital K, minus sum of the lambda m's, where m is between one and n. Okay, so, and again, so the proof is really just a careful uh, calculation. Linear. So instead of going into that, I'll try to really explain to you how uh, this expression here, which is the essence, shapes up in uh, various favorable situations. So a few, a few remark. So, so going forward, I'm going to assume that LH is a positive line bundle. 
in particular, right? That means that theta h is positive definite, which is the same as saying all the lambda one to lambda n's above are positive. Okay, so there are two cases that will be interesting for us later. So let me start with the ones that will be interested next time. So if in the particular case where p is equal to n, right? So we are working with n q forms, right? Then what's going on here is that each j, right? So each j, each multi-index j, right, will have to be one all the way to n. Right, so, so in that case, what will happen is that this sum here will be what? Well, the first part, this part here, will be the same as the last part. They will cancel out. So all I'm left with is the middle part. So in this case, we'll have the, this theta h lambda commutator is nothing but sum over just k, right? Of lambda k, k u, uh, well, there's just one j, so All right. So, in particular, this expression here is definitely going to be always positive. So, in this case. This is a positive operator. Okay, another case of interest is going to be the case where uh, we take, sometimes this is possible, so we take the Kähler form to be the same as the curvature of H, right? So as we agreed upon here, Right, we're dealing with positive line bundles. So the curvature form is positive. So for, let's say for simplicity, we just take the background killer metric to be the curvature of my uh, line bundle. So, so this induces some simplifications in particular, right? So all the eigenvalues here are going to be one. So if I stare at this expression here, right? So everything is one, one, and one. So, I will have a very simple expression for this commutator. So it will be nothing but uh, P plus Q minus N U, All right? So the takeaway is that if P plus Q is greater than N, then theta H Lambda is positive, right? P plus Q less than N is negative, and it's equal to zero in between. Like that. Okay, good. So uh, let's see how this helps us understand a bit of geometry, right? That's always the point. Okay, good. So, so back to Akizuki Nakano. So we have, right, so let's pick now U, a global PQ form on L, and let's plug this U into Akizuki Nakano. So let's first focus on this term here, right? So this is um, del bar, del bar star plus del bar 
star del bar, right? So if I use uh, integration by parts, I will get here del bar u and the product del bar u plus del bar star u, del bar star u in a product. So in particular, this is always uh, non-negative. I get the same thing here. This is also always non-negative. So I can uh, minorize the right-hand side in the following manner, right? I can, you can just forget about this. So all you're left with is theta h So if uh, is positive, so if this expression is positive, like as we saw some of the cases above, uh, then we can say furthermore that this is greater than some c times length u squared, right? So let, let's just uh, write this out more time. Okay. All right, so this will imply the Nakano vanishing theorem. So let me finish up with that. So the Nakano vanishing theorem says uh, the following, so if LH is a positive line bundle, like this in our case, then all the HPQ cohomology groups of L are zero for P plus Q, for all PQ P plus Q greater than N. So mind you, it's, this is not true for all values P and Q, right? So I, uh, the result uh, uh, that I unfortunately, so, so unfortunately in the previous lecture, uh, I wasn't careful enough about this. So we're reviewing this result here, right? So the Nakano theorem says, Nakano vanishing theorem says, uh, that all the HPQ cohomology groups vanish for a positive line bundle where P plus Q is greater than the dimension of the underlying manifold. Now the proof of this real quick really rests on this identity here. So what's going on? Well, by definition, HPQ XL, right, is kernel of del bar acting on PQ forms over image of del bar acting on PQ minus one forms. Okay, so as we learned, right, in Hodge theory, so this is kernel of del bar intersected with kernel of del bar star, right? Or maybe I can, the intermediate step here is, is what? This is kernel of del bar intersected with image of del bar p q minus one perp and then this is kernel of del bar star All right so this is the step that uses hodge theory okay but if i have an element u in kernel of del bar intersected with kernel of del bar star, then this identity says what? It says that automatically, right? So this is zero, this is zero. So this means that the length of u squared is zero. So that means you have to be zero, right? So in particular, these groups, All right, that's all I wanted to say today. Thank you for your attention.